Yo, what is up guys? So for today, we're going to be talking about Destiny 2. Now specifically, we're going to be looking at some of the weapons I think you should get before this season is over. Uh, big difference to the video I posted where it was like the most disappointing weapons. Uh, this, however, is going to be some of the best weapons in this season so far. And two of them are kind of like niche picks that I did. But before I get started, if you guys like the video, liking, commenting, subscribing really does help the channel grow. And I very much appreciate it. Uh, if you also want to check out my live streams, you can catch me on twitch.tv slash fix Tony. There you can look at me and just basically see what games I play. We do play Destiny 2, but we also do play other things as well. So come check me out. That'd be, I, that'd be very much appreciated. And other than that, let's get started with the video. So the first thing I'm going to be tell, telling you is the fact that all these weapons um, can easily be grinded, I guess, uh, with like two of them. Because, like, all of these you can get in the in the Umbral Ingram place. Like, you can actually get your Umbral Ingram to at least give you either either that weapon or, like, a random one. So, these are pretty much easily farmable. To get the God Roll that you want, that's probably where a lot of people will, like, get angry about it. Because it's, it's all up to chance. Not only that, but I'm not going to be showing you all the perks and all that. It's literally just going to be me explaining some of the rolls that I think are really good. Uh, so if you are interested in that, I have videos explaining Chroma Rush, uh, and all the other weapons in this video, aside from the future War Cult ones. I have not done a video for that, but if you guys are interested in that, let me know. I'll definitely do it. But other than that, let's get right into it. So Chroma Rush, that's the first weapon that I'm going to be talking about. I think this weapon is super dope. Uh, especially for PVE, you, you end up getting subsistence and rampage, which is such a good role. But if you don't want subsistence, even though it's not bad anymore because they took out the whole, uh, it destroys your ammo economy. They just, they took that out. So now like realistically, it's really good. You can also have heating up if you want, which is really good. Final blows with this weapon increases accuracy and stability while improved recoil or vertical recoil. That's pretty good for people who, don't know how to handle auto rifles i guess or just need that extra accuracy and stability but you also have tunnel vision reloading after defeating a target greatly increases target acquisition and aim down sight speed for a short duration i think this one's pretty good if you like combine it with kill clip just because you'll be getting two you'll be getting two uh, benefits from just one reload so for me like subsistence and rampage would, would be the one to go to you like rarely fucking reload at this point it's one of my favorite guns right now i always have it on myself and i know a lot of people are gonna be bothered by it considering you're gonna be having to switch over like if you're using the uh the war mine build you're gonna have to switch over from using the uh the carbine i think it's called i forget the the actual name of it but the auto rifle my only thing is like Chroma Rush is so good that I would I would switch it out if I was using that build, but it's all up to you really. Next one is gonna be Ignition Code. This one shouldn't shouldn't be surprise anyone because it's really fucking good. So you're gonna be looking at Slide Shot, Ambitious Assassin, and personally for me, Lead from Gold. I think Lead from Gold is highly slept on. And then for the second row, more, most likely Vorpo Weapon or Demolitionist. I don't see any I don't see any point for Frenzy, one for all or danger zone uh thresh i could see a little i could see it just because it does give you a good amount of super energy but other than that the other damage perks are just not worth it like danger zone for me is not worth it so for me i i want i specifically want slide shot ambitious assassin and lead from gold with vorpal weapon i want all those three weapons just because slide shot would be really fun to use vicious assassin is already fun i already have that with uh Ambitious Assassin and Frenzy, and I already love it. And Lead from Gold, I already have a Lead from Gold and Vorpal Weapon, so I'm already pretty much happy. The only thing is, I don't know if I have Spike Grenades on it, because you're gonna want Spike Grenades. Obviously, I shouldn't have to explain why, but it's really good. And I just looked at all my weapons, and I don't have Spike Grenades on. Oh, I have one I have, I have one with a Slice Shot and Demolitionist, so I guess that's pretty cool. But I guess I got to go back to farming because I definitely want spike grenades. So that's pretty much it. This weapon is super dope. I really love it. Not only that, I think it's the only kinetic grenade launcher um, that we have. Don't quote me on that, but I just don't remember any grenade launchers on the kinetic. So that's also a big plus in my book because we kind of did need one. 
Next one is going to be Grid Skipper. This one, honestly, the only reason I have it on the list is because it's really good in PvP. Uh, people don't really expect you to use a rapid fire frame. And when they when you do, it's it's so stupid. It's so good. So like for the first throw, I think Killing Wind is dope. Heating up is dope. Tunnel Vision is good. I can even see moving target being some something some people really want to use. Uh, for the second row, high impact reserves is gonna be. I I want it. I want to test it to see if like it's worth it. But if it is, then this is gonna be really good as well. Multi kill clip is the one I have uh, specifically. Killing win and multi kill clip. That's the role I have. Uh, Frenzy. I don't know if I like Frenzy enough to like say this is good. Thresh for a warlock with Nezarak Sin would be super dope because. Nezarak Sin's already bumping up everything else, and you're getting your super energy faster as well. And if I remember correctly, Nezarak Sin does apply to your super as well, so that's just an extra bonus there. And last but not least, like snapshot sites, I think people would value just because uh, the gun does feel a little chunky. Other than that, this weapon is super dope. I love it a lot. It's it's so much fun when you actually start popping off with it. But I will say, like, it is a little unwieldy sometimes just because like you're shooting so fast you have to like aim and personally like for me i can do it but i understand if people are like no nah, it's it's too unwieldy for me i get that i super get that so next weapon is gonna be st so let's talk about why borrow time is not in this list but stochastic variable is so first and foremost the base ammo for this is 36 which means if you put up a backup mag or just end up getting like a uh, phase magazine i think it's called or any other magazine perk then it's immediately getting bumped to like 40 or 41 depending on how good that one is i think it's like it'll be 40. you're getting an extra four shots uh but the thing is i i feel more comfortable when an smg is at least at the 30s just because i feel like I, i'll be able to shoot a lot more than i really do not only that but in the last video i, I showed borrow time and it was actually killing a lot more you guys also gotta remember that i have a I have a swashbuckler on that one, so that's why I was get, get, getting able to get more kills. Uh, stochastic variable, kind of the same situation, even better in my opinion, because this one actually drops with multi-kill clip and ambitious assassin. So if you really did want to, you could actually just bump the ammo even more. So like four, you'll like what is it? It doubles if it's an ambitious. No, it doesn't double. Uh, I'm thinking about something else. It, I think it gives you like, I, it would give you like. 10 maybe 20 more bullets i think maybe so like you're looking at 50 to 60 rounds in the magazine for a submachine gun that's pretty dope for me i i have the role that i want is killing wind and multi-kill clip or ambitious assassin and multi-kill clip i think that would be really dope the role that i have is surplus and multi-kill clip which is not bad i just think uh i'd i'd enjoy it a lot more if i had ambitious assassin or killing wind uh but yeah, uh, the, the, so like the reason I have this SMG is because it has a lot, it's a higher amount of rounds in the chamber. Not only that, but it's a lightweight frame. Like I said, I generally like lightweight frames more than any other frame just because of the high ammo count. And this one has it. Not only that, the perks are pretty dope. Killing Wind, I love Killing Wind. Ambitious Assassin, I love Ambitious Assassin. Feeding Frenzy, although I hate it because of how butchered it became, it's still good once you get it to like four or five stacks. Um, Zen moment uh, for me. I don't really care surplus would probably be the best one too. then multi kill clip for the next row uh, wellspring and I don't know. I wouldn't say quick draw just because like you're like you're already Well, I mean your handling is at 55. I don't know that would be like personal preference at that point But like why would you why would you switch kick ki quick draw with multi kill clip for me? So that's pretty much it. Uh, that's literally it. It's because it's a lightweight frame it has more ammo and it has pretty dope uh, rolls as well. And you won't be farming this forever because, again, Borrow Time is unfortunately a playlist weapon, which means getting the roll that you want is like super, super low. But Stochastic Variable is not only easy to farm because you can farm it in the Umbrella Ingram place, but you can like you can go to get to a point where it's either that weapon or another one. So at that point, you have a 50% chance. So yeah. Stochastic variable did not know I lo loved it that much So the next two I'm just gonna combine into one which is the day aside and U Uzumi rr4 so the reason I put these two together is because These two weapons are kind of like the The runner-ups because if it was up to me 
I wouldn't put the day aside here. I would put the Xeno class to five, four or five. I forget what number it is. Or I would put instead of Uzumi RR4, I would put the Frozen Orbit because those th those two weapons do this their job a lot better. So let me explain. Uh, the only reason I put the, the day aside is because it drops with Grave Robber and One Two Punch. For people who run melee builds, you know the importance of having Grave Robber and One Two Punch, especially on a shotgun that has very high ammo, because you're gonna be reloading for a long time unless you're a hunter. But I don't. I don't do I don't use the uh, <clears throat> the reload dodge anymore. I haven't used it in forever. So for me, I Grave Robber and One Two Punch is just so beneficial. And unfortunately, Xeno class also drops with Grave Robber and One Two Punch and Assault Mag. The Day Aside does not. But the difference, the, but the reason why I put the Day Aside here is because the Day Aside is e like way more way you'll get it you'll get it more and you'll be able to farm it easily because you can again go to the umbral engram and and just farm for it while the xeno class you have to run strikes if i remember correctly and nobody wants to run strikes i don't want to run strikes so at this point tough titties i this is this is my runner up this is what i've been using for my melee builds it's kind of the same situation with the uzumi rr4 uh, the only difference is I don't know which one would be the better of for damage because Frozen Orbit drops with the same things as Zumi. It drops with Triple Tap and High Impact Reserves. <clears throat> uh, the only thing is I don't know which one I would prefer, Triple Tap or Vorpal Weapon and, or High Impact Reserves. My gut is telling me High Impact Reserves just because it'll proc on anything, not just bosses or elites. I think it also... It also works on elites for Vorpal Weapon. Ultimately, like, triple tap with high impact reserves would probably be the one that I'm looking for specifically, just because I'll be able to proc it a lot on pretty much everything. And Zumi already has a pretty high high ammo count compared to, well, I mean, it's only one more bullet. But Zumi, you can get it pretty high. While Frozen Orbit, I think you'll only be able to get it up to five. The, not only that, but if Azumi, if the death version of Azumi has a a backup mag like an adept backup mag that actually gives you more then i think at that point it would be much more beneficial to get a zoomy an adept zoomy with those rolls but already i'm like ugh, the chances of me getting an adept weapon with triple tap and high impact reserves and a magazine roll i just uh but it's also the same thing with frozen orbit i have to get it in pvp and the chances of me getting like triple tap and uh high impact reserves and a magazine it's just that one that one's even worse in my opinion so for me the day aside and the uzumi rr4 are probably going to be like the runner ups of that with <clears throat> with uzumi probably being a little bit better if you get the god god roll of it just because you'll be able to shoot a lot more but the reason i kind of want to want frozen orbit is because you shoot less but you'll probably still be doing more damage because it is a high impact or aggressive frame, my bad. But that that's pretty much it. Uh, I just wanted to talk about these weapons just because I think they're really dope. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you guys think I chose wisely? Let me know in the comments below. If you guys want to follow me on my social media, let's links are in the description below. I thank you all and I will see you guys later.